Okay, so in the first video, I demonstrated how to create a table and how to manually enter information into the table. I then demonstrated how to create a form which would allow your end users to have a way of entering data in a more user-friendly manner, and that way it allows you to shut off the administrative tools. Now we're going to likewise show the user-friendly way of the import exporting of data and the querying which we covered in the last three videos. So first we're going to create a new query because this one is uh, an update type query and so it updates the employee ID if I recall correctly. We just want a simple select query. So create and we'll go into query design. We close this. You can use it if you want. And we're just going to drag ticket tracker in here. We're going to drag the individual cases, uh, the individual fields, excuse me. Now, again, if you use the asterisk, if you change fields, those fields will automatically show up down here if you use the asterisk. The problem is, again, if anyone is using your data, if you're exporting this and you're giving it to someone and they have some kind of automated process uh, they use on that data, the addition of fields could indeed mess it up. So double-edged sword, this auto-updates, but auto-update might not be a good thing. So we're going to look at incident date. So say you need to run an end-of-day report. So we're going to put in date with an open and close parenthesis. What this does is this says whatever today's date is, compare this field to that. So only show the rows where the incident date is today's date. And what's great about this is this changes automatically. So even though I've written this today, if I run it two weeks from now, it'll use whatever that date is. I run it a year from now, it'll use whatever that date is. So this is a really simple way of creating an end of day report. If you're looking explicitly for what happened today, you could just search a uh, query based on that field. And now what we're going to do is we're going to run this just so you see it work. It works. And uh, these are the two cases I entered before I started recording. Now we're going to go back to design view. We're going to save this. So click on the little X. It's going to prompt you. You're going to say yes. And let's call this EOD underscore report. It's end of, end of day report. I'm going to click OK, and now it shows up over here. So again, as an administrator, you can just double click on this and run your report. But you're not going to let your end users do that more than likely. So what you're going to do is you're going to create a new form. So blank form. Let's go to the property sheet and again make those typical changes. So we're going to go to format, and we want we don't want record select. We don't want navigation button, and we don't want this to be sizable. Now what we're going to do is now we're going to click on add existing fields, and it shows none because we don't have anything linked to this form. So we click on view, change it design, click up here. So in the upper left corner, not just below it, because then you're looking at details, the upper left corner. And again, click on property sheet. So it's always important that when you're looking at the property sheet, you got to make sure you know what you're highlighting. Are you highlighting the entire form? Are you highlighting a category? Are you highlighting a certain field? Are you highlighting a button? The property sheet will automatically uh, change based on context. So in the case that you have the form selected as, as, as in its entirety, it's giving you properties of the form. So as far as data, the record source is going to be end of day report. So now you have access to anything that's in the end of day report. So anyways, what we do now is we've selected that the end of day report is uh, going to be what we want. 
And now we're going to start creating, let's see, let's take a button and we'll just click here. It'll automatically add some form space. Let's hit cancel since we said that we really wanted to walk through this manually. So click on the uh, the little circle in the, uh, not the circle, but the little square in the upper left corner. And again, we're going to look at the properties. So for format, the caption, which is that, it's going to be, um, we'll call it end of D, EOD, end of day cases. Click away, and as you can see, it changed. I'm not going to go through all these, but we're now going to go to event. And again, on click. So uh, that tells you that when you click on this, something's going to happen. We're going to do this both ways. We're going to show how to do this as a macro. We're going to show you how to do it as code. Why? Some of it's preference. Not to mention the macros can only come up with just so many combinations. You might want to find yourself meanly coding something. So for the, the first time, we'll do macro and we'll do OK. What do we want to do? We said we want to open query. What's the query name? We want EOD report. The view, do you want it to show up as a data sheet? Do you want it to show up in design? How do you want it to show up? We'll have it show up in data sheet. Data mode defaults to edit, but if you just want to view it, you can choose read only. And now we choose save. Close that. And now for this form, we also choose save. And we'll call this, we'll, we're going to have a lot of different queries on this form as I plan forward. So let's call this um, all reports. So now that we have that, we can now run this. So we click on view, we click on EOD cases, and there you go. So now you can, as we said, you, for this particular function, even if you have the uh, ribbon shut off, your end users can still run an end of day report. Now we're gonna break that actually. So where it says embedded macro, just going to delete that. Now we're going to click on the ellipsis, go to Code Builder, and click on OK. And it brings up a separate editor, a separate text editor. Now, this is telling you what this code is going to be attached to. It's attached to the command zero object. Okay. So even though we changed the caption, we didn't change the name. It's still command zero. So this is how this is going to look. So it's D-O-C-M-D dot. And this is one of the reasons why it's called visual, because it gives you all these prompts. And so this is going to look familiar. Just as in the macro, there was open query. In here, there's also open query. And now we need the name of the query. And the name of the query is, was it EOD underscore report? We can just kind of slide this over to confirm. So EOD underscore report, a comma. And this tells you how do you want it to uh, look. So we said that we want it to be I believe we said normal. And then we want this to be read only. That should do it. We save this, close this, close this, again, save. Let's close this. 
just making sure the change uh, took, I've noticed that sometimes it does not take for some reason. So we're going to do design view. Actually, sorry, we wanted to go to um, all reports, do design view on that. We'll click on EUD cases. We'll click on the ellipsis, and indeed, that did save and apply. So let's run it to see if it works. So end of day cases, and there you go. So now you've seen two different ways to perform the same function. If you want to do a macro to run a query, or if you want to actually go through the um, Visual Basic and do it that way. And like I said, the reason why you'd use Visual Basic is if you have to make little changes that say the um, macros don't allow for, or maybe uh, you're doing a more extensive, uh, really customized code that the macros just aren't designed for. So basically, uh, the macros are more point and click, whereas the uh, code is much more flexible. But as you can see, it gets you to the same end result, and it's just a matter of uh, which you're more comfortable with. So that should do it for this one.